Hey guys, I'm Susana, this is Jeremy, and we just wanted to welcome you to The Imperfect Show. This is where Jeremy and I are just gonna talk about a couple things, family things, life things, really from the perspective of imperfect people living in an imperfect world, and this is something that we've talked about a lot, yep. um, just in the life that we have and our family and, and trying to do life, and we've talked a lot about this, trying to um, just be imperfect per people living in this, um, in this world. Yeah, it's a, a difficult world. And one of the, the bad habits I think most of us have is that we believe that other people have it figured out yeah. and we don't have it figured out. And this is the reason that we've been talking about this as we raise kids. Uh, we have uh, two young adult children and then we have younger children. So we've got four kids, kind of uh, different ends of the spectrum. Um, and as parents, that this is a big area for this. We look at other people who are parenting, they're raising their kids, and we know the mess that we sometimes have mm -hmm. in our own house yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and trying to do our best. And um, we've got good kids, but they're kids, and we're parents, we're just trying to figure things out. And yet we look at other people and say, well, they've got it all figured out. Well, the reality is none of us are perfect. That's not the goal, it's not the desire, but um, it's just a reality. And that, that's true not only with you know, in parenting, that's where kind of we live. Mm -hmm. But in our relationships, in our marriage relationship, yeah. you know, we have struggles, everyone has struggles, and yet we often feel like we're the only ones that are struggling. When that's really just not true. And uh, so this idea of being imperfect, not that we desire that, but it's okay because that's, that's how we are. Yeah, and we've talked a lot about just having the desire to um, just be more transparent with other people about maybe even what we personally right. have gone through. We've kind of talked about some of that in the past. But just, um, just the, the necessity of us being able to share that with other people and sharing that with each other and um, just kind of being more open with other people about struggles yeah. and not just making it look like maybe we have it all together. Right. Or you know, looking at other people and think, wow, why can't we be like that? Because they look like they have it all together. Yeah. So the goal of you know, this time and this show would be uh, to do that, to be transparent, but not just you know, us mm -hmm. dumping our stuff on whoever would watch. Uh, but really just kind of having the relationship where we understand we're all going through life together. Um, I, I said this <clears throat> speaking somewhere else last week that uh, often when we look at other people, what we see is their highlight reel. I don't know who said that originally. Yeah. I, I've stolen that. But <laughs> we, we uh, are looking at their highlight reel, right? It's the very best that they have. And uh, when we look at ourselves, we're seeing the blooper reel. Yeah. You, you know, we know the <laughs> mess. And so that comparison thing is really, really dangerous and it causes problems. Uh, I mean, everywhere you can, you know, imagine it, you know, in your job, in your parenting, in your relationships, uh, at church, you know, we go to church and uh, that's the one place that people do their very best to look mm -hmm. as good as they possibly can. Yeah. And uh, I've been told, you know, a lot of times over the years, no one knows what it's like to be me. No one here understands what I'm going through. Everyone else has it figured out when really 90% of the people in that room mm -hmm. are struggling with many of the same things. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just has to be okay. Again, that's not the goal, but it has to be okay to not be perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and a big part of that is us flipping the thing upside down and, and understanding um, everyone is struggling with yeah. stuff. There's no one who's perfect. And whoever it is in your mind that you think they've got it all figured out, uh, hopefully they've got some good things figured out, but they're struggling in some areas too. And that's just important to keep in mind. Uh, this comparison game kills us. Yeah, I think it does too. Yeah. yeah, And social media, I feel like, has so much to do with that. I kind of have seen maybe a shift recently on Facebook of people that are a little bit more, you know, show pictures of their messy house and just maybe of like <laughs> struggles that they're having with yeah. their kids. So I think we can go a little bit overboard on the other side right, too. Right. Um, you know, but I feel like there's, there is definitely should be a balance there. Of, it's so easy to kind of scroll through pictures on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, whatever social media uh, venue you use. It can be so easy to right. look at people, other videos and their, uh, pictures and to see how perfect maybe their life might seem and uh, it could be really discouraging um, yeah. comparing yourself to um, other people like that other people's um, just life in general maybe lifestyle and it could really be um, really damaging yeah the, the the flip side of that is what you just mentioned that there's kind of this you know pendulum swing yeah. so now <laughs> you know I'm not perfect and you just need to deal with it yes. right yes. and that's not what we're talking about either right. because that is still comparison 
It's just comparison on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm a mess, I'm gonna show you everything that's wrong with me. Not in an attempt to get better, to fix things, or to have better relationships, but just, I've just settled, I'm okay. I'm okay with this. It kind of makes us feel better about ourselves. Yeah, it makes us feel better about ourselves, okay, well, right? Okay, I'm not that messed up, so, <laughs> right. so again, comparing ourselves to other people. Yeah, and it's, it's important to understand that the purpose of all of this is A, to acknowledge that we are imperfect, and that's okay, you know, that's how we are. But B, the second part of it is in our imperfection, we want to grow together and learn together and move forward together. Mm -hmm. And we have the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, again, I've been thinking about this a lot and we've talked about this quite a bit, but even as you look at scripture, for those that are uh, people who read the Bible and, and study the Bible, um, the examples of the heroes in the Bible, just mm -hmm. about every one of them is someone who was imperfect, who yeah. really struggled, who uh, had a hard time, who made bad decisions, who had their ups and their downs, but you know, in all of it, it it not was okay, but they were able to move forward mm -hmm. because they had a a purpose and a goal and something out in yeah. front of them. Yeah. So really, really important. And uh, yeah, our goal is that this would be a help to people who, like us, um, don't want to feel bad <laughs> for not being perfect, but yeah. also don't want to stay where they are. Yeah, and uh, that's okay. And as we go through this process of developing this uh, this show and getting this out, uh, if, you know, as you watch this, if you have uh, things you want us to talk about or, or consider, um, we'd love to do that. We just yeah. want to be a help. Um, we have kind of been operating in this world for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, for boy, almost 20 years, we've been in uh, a ministry, uh, you know, one kind or another, um, church ministry and, and uh, pastoral ministry. Now we work with an organization, uh, for those that don't know us, we work with uh, an organization called the Mighty Oaks Foundation, that, that deals with veterans and active duty service members and first responders and then their spouses. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that, that family, right? Yeah. And uh, we deal with folks who are dealing with uh, you know, any kind of trauma, any kind of life difficulty you can imagine. That's who, who we're dealing with and who we're connecting to and who we're relating with. And uh, so often um, the, the inability to continue moving forward boils down to, uh, well, no one else is like me. No one else understands. I'm so broken on the inside that you know you just couldn't relate to that. And I am so imperfect that nothing good could come from my mm -hmm. life. And and I think what we've seen again and again and again and again is that people who really do something important with their lives are people who acknowledged that they're imperfect yeah. and you know kind of embraced that and then said, but I'm not going to allow allow that imperfection to keep us from mm -hmm. from moving forward. Yeah. yeah. And this is something that, you know, man or woman, I think, is, um, is a consistent struggle. Maybe different for women than men. Yeah, I think probably a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. But uh, we compare differently, but we compare. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a human, a human thing. It's a human yeah. thing. It's a human comparison. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that will be a help to you as we go along, and we would uh, really love to connect with you, so let us know. Um, first topic we want to discuss today, so it's kind of our introduction so you know what we're about, what we're doing, and uh, we'll talk more about this as we go forward. But uh, along with that, kind of in that vein, is um, really what we wanted to talk about today, and, and it's this. Everyone has a story. So you know, we just said everyone you know, is imperfect in their own way, and everybody's trying to deal with things and figure things out. But everyone has a story. Every single person has a story. You may not think your story is as big or as bad or as wonderful or whatever as someone else's, but everyone has a story. And there is tremendous power in your story and connecting with other people and helping and encouraging other people and growing yourself. Uh, you need to not only tell your story, but you need to listen to the stories of others. And uh, man, this is such a powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that there's a big kind of, when I think about telling your story and all that, I think there's a big movement maybe towards that and people are looking for a platform or maybe kind of like a, like a bigger thing beyond what is kind of more close and personal to them. When I think about kind of telling your story, yeah. I really feel like um, what is missed sometimes now when people are talking about it is kind of in the everyday. So um, it can be as small of a thing as, I mean, even if you have not been given a platform as like a public speaking kind of thing, or maybe a venue in which you can like in front of a large group of people share kind of what, what has happened in your life to bring you where you are today and mm -hmm. kind of all of that. I feel like that sometimes we miss the importance of just 
sharing that in the kind of day to day. It could be as small as maybe with your neighbor, talking with your neighbor, yeah. or one on one with the person at the grocery store, or at church if you're in a small group, or something where you can be you know, impact the life of someone else through your life and your story. But it doesn't have to be like a big thing. And if you have right. a big place and a big thing, that's that's great. Right. But I feel like the goal is to impact other people in kind of small everyday ways. And I mean, as a parent. We kind of talked yeah. about that's kind of a lot of what we deal with now yeah. is even with our kids and just helping them because of maybe something that we've been through, helping them kind of with stuff that they deal with on the everyday. Um, so I feel like that sometimes what's missed is the small kind of everyday ways that we can make a difference um, with our story. Because a lot of times if somebody hears it from us in a small way, maybe they would be encouraged to then, you know, share with someone else. Right. Yeah, and there are so many examples of this. Again, going back to a scriptural example, one of the great things about the Bible, and you know, you're watching hopefully from a lot of different places. Maybe you don't read the Bible, but you should uh, because there's some great stories in there and a lot of other good things in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the great things about the, the Bible um, is that it tells stories of people, but it doesn't just talk about the good things. It talks about the bad things as well. And you, you see fully develop these stories of people who, as I mentioned earlier, they accomplished these great things, but but so often they came from a very difficult place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, some of these people are, uh, you know, they're murderers and they're adulterers and they're people who were raised in the wrong home and, and all of these, these issues that they bring into life and then they begin to, you know, try to make good decisions and do good things and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. We learn these stories, but as we learn the stories, and the reason I believe uh, fully these stories are in the Bible is because it, it allows us to connect on a personal level. Mm-hmm. We can see ourselves in those yeah. stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's so much power in that. We, we sometimes think, well, Christians, um, religious people, uh, they, they, they're perfect or they're you know, this or that or they think they are. And if they think they are, they're, they're not reading the Bible because that's not the story of the Bible. Right. right? Yeah. So that's a great example. Um, but you know, in life, we've seen this play out over and over and over again. In the work that we do with uh, veterans and service members and first responders and spouses, um, probably the the key element to really connecting on a personal level quickly is just the power of story. Mm -hmm. We, again, for those that don't know, our program is a five-day program. You know, we have a men's program and a women's program. A five-day program and and, uh, folks will come mostly strangers, to a place they've never been to before. We have facilities across the country, um, these beautiful ranches, and they come to one of those facilities. They've never been there before. They're now in a room with a bunch of people that they don't know, and we're asking them to deconstruct a lifetime of trauma and brokenness and hurt and difficulty, right? And uh, they're probably angry that they're there, um, but that's where they are. And people ask us all of the time, how do you get through to folks like that? And, and really, we start telling stories, mm-hmm. but not other people's stories. We tell our own stories. Yeah. And um, you know, in the, in the men's program and the women's program, uh, the format is the same. We start off by saying, uh, someone needs to stand up and tell you that it's going to be okay. But not just because they want you to believe it's going to be okay, but they're going to tell you it's going to be okay, and then they're going to tell their story, mm-hmm. where they came from and what they learned and, and how they started to move forward. There's so much power in that. Mm-hmm. We've seen that, you know, certainly in the men's program, and I know um, that your team uh, and the ladies' program has seen the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's really powerful. Um, just what an encouragement you can be to someone else, just by encouraging them just to take yeah. the next step, just like you did. And a lot of times, even what we see is you may not necessarily have struggled in the same way as someone else, but right. just having struggled in general, or maybe having <clears throat> difficulty in your life that you've had to maybe take steps to overcome, that is huge. And and that was a, sometimes it's a common misconception that you have to, in order to be able to speak to someone or share with someone, you have to have struggled in that same exact way. Right. And that just because you haven't, right. maybe that means that they won't hear you or that you can't share with them. And I just don't think that's true. I feel like no. that when someone is just encouraged to know that, okay, well maybe we don't share the same struggle, but you know what it's like and it's the same um, kind of, you know, very similar steps that have to be taken to kind of overcome and, and that process looks very similar um, no matter how, you know, maybe 
exactly yeah. you have struggled or had a difficult time in yeah. your life. And so that's been encouraging to me just to see that it's so powerful just to share in general um, story of struggle. And um, that's that's just been such yeah. an encouragement to see, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I'll talk to professional counselors who will say something like this to me. I don't know how to counsel veterans. I don't know how to counsel the families of mm -hmm. service members or those in the first responders community. And these are counselors who are, you know, have a lifetime of experience, you know, many years, some several decades of experience counseling, and they'll still say, I don't, I don't have any idea how to counsel people who have been through. Um, they always say it this way: what you've been through. And mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the sentiment there, um, but the reality is that's just that's just not mm -hmm. true. Trauma is not reserved for those in the military or those mm -hmm. in the law enforcement community. It's, it's a human condition and it's a, it's a human struggle. And what breaks through that barrier is someone saying, uh, I know where you've been because I've been there and it's possible to move forward and I wanna, I wanna take you there. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a kind of a picture, I don't know if it's a meme, but a picture of a, um, a guy sitting in a hole. That's the first picture. And, and uh, there's a caption there about trauma and difficulty in counsel. And uh, the next picture is of someone who has walked by sitting in the hole with them. And uh, really, in a sense, that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. is real help comes when you get down in the hole with somebody. Mm -hmm. When uh, you get down there and say, look, I, I understand your, your struggle. Now, there is something to be said for particularly in you know, specific communities like the veterans community or others to say, I've served the same way you are. I've, mm -hmm. I have experienced some of the same things. And it's going to be okay. Certainly, that breaks some barriers. Yeah. Um, but we never need to feel bad about our own struggle when telling our own story. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah. is going to connect to that. Right. Um, we have some folks in our organization who have incredible stories, and certainly they connect. Well, it makes other people feel like, well, my story is just not big enough or, or strong enough. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. Right. Tell your story, and it will be used to encourage or help someone. Yeah. I always like to just tell people, you just never know how. God will use something that's been done to your life to impact someone else. Yeah. And you just never know. You never know if there, even if one person in the room or the person that you're talking to, I've had so many conversations with people where, you know, it's, it's just not that, it's not the case where your story is so insignificant yeah. that it can't touch someone right. else. And so it doesn't really matter what that looks like. Um, it's just really important to use what you've been given yeah. to impact the lives of other people. That's right. Um, I heard someone one time give a testimony and, you know, testimony, uh, that's a church word for your story. <laughs> and and uh, they were telling their story and they said, I've got such a boring story. Compared to all the people in here, I've got such a boring story. And I thought, man, you know, for my kids, I want them to have a boring story. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't want them to have the crazy story that they can use to share uh, to help everyone. Mm -hmm. I want them to have a boring story because yeah. personally, that's what I want them to grow into. But whatever their story is, even a boring one can really go a long way to help mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And we need to need to understand that. So with that, and this is this is where, you know, I like to go with these stories and, and we're not doing this just so we can say stuff and, yeah. and and you know entertain for thirty minutes. I don't think we're that entertaining, so that's uh, that's definitely not the goal. You might not, I'm not you might not be, but I am. Yeah, no. I, no. <laughs> um, but saying all of that, what's the big takeaway? And I think there are a couple. Um, from that, we talked about this a little while ago. Um, be willing to tell your story. Be willing to tell your story. We're so insecure about our own mm -hmm. story, either because it's so bad, <laughs> no one can connect to it, or it's not bad enough. So right. it's not going to be yeah. meaningful. Mm -hmm. But be willing to tell your story. Yeah. That's just be ready <laughs> because that's what people need. They don't need advice, they need mm -hmm. to know oh, there's someone that gets it. Yeah. We saw this play out recently in a uh, small group that we're a part of. It was a marriage small group. And, man, wonderful people in that, in that group. And, um, you know, thankful for every person there. We started to talk about marriage and different things. And it's not a teaching time as much as it's a discussion time. Mm -hmm. And we discuss and ask questions and ask people to tell their stories. And just the hope that's renewed and restored when people are willing and ready to tell their story. Yeah. It really... I feel like it opens people's eyes to like, oh wow, like I'm not the only one dealing with this. Right. And just how encouraging, comforting um, it is just to know that there's other people that have been, or are maybe right now experiencing the same things you are, or maybe they're uh, 
a little bit older and they've already kind of walked through some of that. And I think that's when what's so cool about that class is yeah. that there's just such a mixture of people in there. Um, so really just just such an encouragement, yeah. There's a, uh, another church word. Um, I know a lot of church words because I've been around church a long time. Um, <laughs> the, the word is redemption. It's actually found in the Bible. It's not just a church word, but it has, you know, extremely broad meaning. But that word redemption, it means to make valuable something that was once valueless. So kind of a wobbly definition, but that's what it means if you look it up. Redemption is um, to redeem, is to make valuable something that was once valueless. Mm -hmm. So you think about getting a coupon or a ticket, right? That The piece of paper that that ticket's on, it, it really has no value. But when you use it for its intended purpose, you hand it to the, the guy at the, you know, trying to get into the stadium or the movie, or uh, it's a coupon, you hand it to the lady behind the counter and you're, you're checking out. Now it has value. It has, you know, maybe a lot of value, maybe a little bit, but uh, it has value because you've redeemed it. And so it is with our stories. When we're ready to tell our story, it adds value or gives value to something that at one time had no value or had negative value. And so when we look at our lives, we need to say, how do I re uh, redeem my story? How do I redeem my past? How do I redeem what I've been through? How do I uh, make valuable something that at one time had no value or, again, had negative value? By using that story to help other people. Mm -hmm. Be ready to tell your story. Um, man, if that's all we talked about, that would be enough, mm -hmm. right? Be yeah. ready to tell your story. The second part, though, is <laughs> this is where people get, hard, uh, get in trouble. Be ready to listen. <laughs> Be ready to listen. Um, just in the same way that, uh, you know, we talk about being imperfect. So now people go, ah, I'm imperfect. Look at all my, my mess. That's not the goal. Uh, the goal is to move forward. Uh, the idea of telling your story is to be helpful. Sometimes what you need to do is listen. Be ready to listen as well. Uh, when someone is willing to tell you their story, you need to be willing to listen to their mm -hmm. story. Don't make this about you because none of this is about you. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be if you're trying to help other people. Yeah, This is the piece that people miss so often because we like to hear ourselves talk. We like to um, tell other people maybe, especially for someone maybe that has never shared about themselves before. And when I think about, you know, telling your story, it could be any, anything, any, maybe one situation, one hard time maybe that you've had with your kids. Maybe it's just a period of like a few months that you struggled in an area of your life. And if you're sharing that with someone else, um, I feel like sometimes we like to hear ourselves talk. We like yeah. to share and people are so ready to do that. And we've seen this when you talk about like the programs uh, with Mighty Oaks, um, people are so ready, especially when they hear someone else are so ready to share what's going on with them that sometimes we kind of lose that willingness to listen right. to what other people have, have right. to say. Or while they're sharing, we forget maybe something that we said, like, oh, I forgot this one part. And yeah. then we, it comes, becomes all about us again. Right. And so that is really, really an important piece because yeah. I think a lot of times that's missed. Yeah, be ready to talk. Be ready to tell your story, but see it as something you're stewarding over. You're using it to help other people because then you're not trying to build a platform so that you can tell your story so people mm -hmm. will look at you and tell you how amazing you are. Yeah. If people tell you how amazing you are, I mean, that's great and, and you know, that's nice, but, but the goal is to help other people. So the other side of that is sometimes the most helpful thing you can do is say, I know where you are because I've been there and that makes it okay for someone else to tell their story. Maybe they've never told their story before. Mm -hmm. And when you tell your story, you take something that's in the dark part of your brain that's rattling around and scaring you, you speak it, it kind of organizes those thoughts. As it comes out, you hear the stuff that sounds silly. <laughs> you begin to identify things you need to let go or deal with or work through. Uh, speaking that, telling your own story is uh, incredibly important. Uh, but sometimes we're so, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, we're so into telling our own story that we never get around to listening. Mm -hmm. And so we need to listen. There is uh, tremendous, tremendous power in story and we need to keep that in mind. I think in all of this, in telling our story and listening to other people share theirs, I feel like that um, I've had some conversations recently where people are maybe ha are in the middle of going through something or they um, recently have come out of something and the, the one thought they have is, um, I can't wait till I can share with someone else or I can't um, wait till what something happens where I can 
um, share that. I think there's that's a that's a good thought to have because I think we should have a willingness to maybe like we've just talked about sharing our story and all of that. But I feel like there is also something that first before we do that we need to kind of internalize what we've learned through that before we're able to really share. I feel like we need to know what we've learned from it. And there's always something that we can personally learn through something sure. that we have struggled through before the, you know, the step of sharing. And, yeah. and the only purpose of struggling is not to share. I mean, there's right. struggles that we have in our life and right. things that we're going through. So while we're going through something, we should not be having the thought, who can I share this who with? Who can I share this with? Uh, unless, it's, something... unless it's someone that can help you work through it. Yes. The yes. specific person right. that can help right. you work through I'm th- it. I'm saying Not more, broadcasting. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. saying more like in the middle of our struggle, we shouldn't be thinking, wow, this must be happening to me so I can use it for something right. else, which that could be, <clears throat> sure. but that might not ever come for you. That might not ever happen where you will, um, in a really big way, like I said at the beginning, have a way to share it. It could be something that happens years from now where then you're able to something triggers the memory of oh wow yeah. like i really experienced yeah. this situation in my life and now someone's come into my life that i can share this with and that maybe it can have an impact in their life and That's right. so i feel like in in the middle of struggling in the middle of um, maybe um, a particular you know thing happening in our life that we're having a difficult time with uh, we need to keep in mind that um, maybe someday we'll be able to use that for other people but maybe it's something that's happening in our lives so that we can learn something about ourselves mm. or that we can learn something. Maybe we need to move in a different way or learn something to be able to go in this other direction. And so yeah. that kind of has been, I don't know if that makes sense at all, yeah. but it's kind of been kind of rolling around in my head when I think about like telling our story because we come in contact with a lot of people who are so eager and so wanting and have been kind of like looking for a moment to share. Yeah. And um, sometimes without first having thought about you know, maybe this is something that I can learn from or maybe something that I need to yeah. kind of move forward in a different way in my life. So Yeah, there's certainly a moment uh, where you need to deal with whatever the issue mm-hmm. is before you broadcast it to other people. Yeah. And sometimes who you need to share with is a person who can help you work through mm-hmm. it before you broadcast it to other people. Right. And then, you know, you have to be appropriate and, and have the clarity of mind to say this is not the right time that might be the right time mm-hmm. later and uh, and to do that so you want to be ready to speak for sure be discerning as to who you speak to mm-hmm. and discerning as to when you then use it in a larger venue yeah. or a larger platform um, I also liked how you said um, how sometimes people may, might feel like their story is very boring yeah. like maybe they don't really have anything powerful or maybe horrible that's happened in their life or anything like that and I like Um, how you pointed that out because when we're talking about um, being imperfect people living in an imperfect world you know like we say we look at people and sometimes their life looks all put together and they look perfect Um, but sometimes maybe they do have a lot of their life together because they've put in some hard work to make things you know that way and and nobody's perfect and nobody has a perfect life and all that but some people do have you know their life very organized and they have made some choices in their life to put them on this path where they are moving forward in the right way and in the right direction and there is nothing wrong with that. Right. And I feel like some people feel bad when they have you know, a life maybe that's orderly or they have um, made some choices in their life to where they have not uh, you know, fallen horribly. Yeah. And, so, and that's okay because even in that, there's a story to tell. And that's something that I've even you know, encouraged people as well that maybe feel like they have you know, a boring story, right. is that it's not boring because there's yeah. something to be gained by other people from that too. So um, I yep. like how you, how you pointed that out. I it's say a lot of really smart things. Yeah, well. <laughs> I appreciate you recognizing that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we all live in an imperfect world and we're imperfect people, but we all have a story as well. And that story is something to be stewarded over, to be shared, to be redeemed. Um, with discretion and with wisdom (laughs) and maybe with some guidance from the right person to help you along that road. But uh, don't hold it to yourself and hold it in and believe you're the only one. You're not the only one. And someone needs to hear your story, but you also need to hear the stories of others. And as you do that, man, you'll make such an impact with the life that God's given you. Mm. That's it for the first show. That's it. That's the first one. All done. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That lets you know when new episodes... Uh, come online, and uh, we're going to do our best to develop this into something that will be a regular uh, show and, and regular content. Um, would love to hear comments. Um, 
really questions, thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, ideas, so that we can continue to uh, develop, uh, you know, more content that will be helpful to you. Yep. And we'd love to do that. So thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.